You are my God, and I confess you. You are my God, and I exalt you. I will thank you, for you became my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, so Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so may always be sustained by his intercession, and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the, the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are strangers and sojourners. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord.
St. Gregory the Great, in commenting on this gospel passage, speaks about how it was not by coincidence, but by providence, that Thomas, the one who doubted, was not there. And so this man whose unbelief could have been a stumbling stone in his faith became for all of us then a great sign of faith and a help for all of our faith. Because without this sign, we wouldn't have this proof of someone putting his hands in his side, putting his fingers in those nail holes to truly confirm that Jesus truly was living in a resurrected body. That those wounds were real, that his flesh was real, but yet there he was in their midst. Not a ghost, but truly a man, truly present, resurrected. And he stands for us and he stands in the church as an example of someone whose doubts, someone who's, for who the obstacle in the relationship with the Lord, when explored and when brought before the Lord, became then a great sign and a boost for their own faith, but then for the faith of many others who would follow after and hear that story. And I'm sure for each of us, at some point in our lives, we've had some struggle in the faith, something that we've wrestled with and had trouble believing or trouble understanding. Maybe it was a circumstance in our own life where we didn't see how the Lord was merciful. We didn't see how the Lord was working in the situation for us. Or maybe it was a theological question. And we had the choice there to let that be a reason to walk away, or rather the beginnings for a deeper prayer and encounter with the Lord. When we took that moment, we took that obstacle, and we presented it to him, and then he was able to answer it for us. And that then becomes, as we see it with St. Thomas, a great boost for our faith. But not just, but that resounds for all ages. Generations of people, what, 2,000 years now of Christians, have been able to rely on that testimony that we have because of St. Thomas. The testimony of that resurrected Christ but also the witness of someone who had a doubt, presented to the Lord, and then was able to come to a deeper faith. My Lord and my God. He was able to say that now, not just because everybody else was saying it, but because he himself had an encounter with the Lord. It became very personal for him. And that's the type of relationship the Lord wants to have for us. Of course, it's better. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. But we still see that with St. Thomas, that the beauty of one who is able to present that doubt and be brought to deeper faith. And that's what we're called to. And so if we can have no doubts in our faith, someone like a St. John, always remaining with him, wonderful, beautiful, and good. But we see that even if we betray the Lord like St. Peter, that we can be reconciled. If we have doubts like St. Thomas, that we can be led to deeper faith through those doubts by bringing them before the Lord. And so nothing stands as an obstacle for a relationship with the Lord, but everything can serve as a chance for greater faith, deepening our faith, deepening our relationship with the Lord. And all of this works to then lead us to be able to be what the Lord calls us to be, which is his witnesses to others. And St. Thomas stands as one of those great witnesses as the legend says, that he was the one who brought the faith into India and that first apostle, the one to preach the faith to, to those in, in Asia. And so when the missionaries came there, there were this group of, of Thomas Christians, those who had already heard the word and had kept the faith alive in their community. And so following that example of St. Thomas, we can present our doubts to him as we Spend this day, this first Friday, as we have adoration, as we do every Friday. I encourage you to, to present any questions you have about your faith, any doubts, to bring that before the Lord. To just offer that with faith, that he does have an answer. And that through it, that he can lead you to a deep relationship with him.
And we humbly place our needs before our faithful God this day. For Pope Francis, successor to the apostles, may he be filled with spiritual gifts and graces as he continues to preach the gospel to all. We pray to the Lord. For our elected officials and all who serve with them, may God protect them from all evil in the exercise of their duties. We pray to the Lord. For those dealing with doubts and anxieties, may God's gift of peace rest in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all gathered here today, may the Holy Spirit pour out upon us his gifts to increase and strengthen our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of faith, may they see their Lord and God face to face this day. We pray to the Lord. And for Mary Dawson and for our parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, hear the prayers we offer you today for the sake of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels we sing to you, and with all our hearts crying out as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Thomas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Let us pray. Our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant we pray that we may recognize him with the Apostle St. Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle Thomas. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.